Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA, police investigating a mysterious death. A woman found dead next to a vehicle on the west side. Jesse Delgado joins us live with the details. And a man shot and killed after someone attempted to rob his house. Police now looking for those four suspects. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, a gorgeous start to your Sunday morning. 55 degrees right now. We started at 60 and we are only going to get warmer out there. Sarah Spivey joins us with your full forecast. Good morning. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us. It's Sunday, January 26th. And that was a beautiful shot of the sun. Things that we're going to expect today. Gorgeous to the day. Sun. 55 <laughs> now. Sarah, you're saying we could expect close to 80? Yeah, by the afternoon, we'll be in the upper 70s. Now, we did have areas of morning fog and drizzle, but those are long gone, and we're seeing tons of sunshine. We... We're at about 60 degrees about an hour or so ago, but temperatures have cooled down a little bit. We're now at 55, and the reason for that is we've had slightly drier air moving in, able to cool us down just slightly as the sun has risen. By the way, sunrise is actually the coolest part of the day, uh, usually, typically, unless we get a cold front or something like that. And then after uh, we see these skies completely clear out, we are just gonna warm up very quickly. Near 80 degrees for the afternoon high, 78, Northeast breeze about five miles per hour and then tonight will cool down pretty quickly as well. Now it's been a while since we've had uh, complete sunshine uh, for a couple of days and we're going to have that uh, throughout the next couple of days. But I would caution you that if you're wanting to wash your vehicle, I would give it the yellow light because there is a small chance uh, for rain, especially on Tuesday, and I'd hate for you to not get enough use out of that clean car before you have to deal with the rain on the roads. And so I'll be back in just a bit to talk about that chance for rain. Until then, back to you, Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Top stories we've been following this morning. A woman is found dead on the ground next to a vehicle. Its driver passed out on the front seat. Jesse DeGoyado live at Public Safety Headquarters. So Jesse, what else are police saying about this case? Well, San Antonio police say that all this unfolded after a vehicle hit a pole outside a tire shop on Culebra. Now, witnesses told police that they didn't see the crash, but they certainly saw the woman laying outside the vehicle. Police say the driver had passed out on the front seat. They believe both the man and woman may have been highly intoxicated. The woman, they say, looked as if she'd been dragged on the ground. They say she showed signs of road rash. And certainly police want to learn more about the circumstances of what they found outside the tire shop. And so far, they have not yet released the names of the man and woman involved. We're live outside Public Safety Headquarters. Jesse De Goyedo, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jesse. A man is dead this morning after being shot in the leg in his own home by four suspects attempting to rob him. Now, it happened just before midnight in the 100 block of Hidalgo Street on the city's west side. Now, according to police, four suspects broke into that home and asked the man inside for money. Now, when the man said he didn't have money, one of those suspects shot him in the leg. They all left the scene taking nothing with them. The man was taken to a hospital where he later died. Now, police say the bullet struck a main artery. Now, three other people were inside the home at the time of that invasion. They are being questioned by police. And a woman in critical condition after police say a truck crashed into a pole just south of downtown. All this happening just after midnight at the intersection of Gunther Street and Eagle Land Drive. Police say the crash was so intense, the woman, a passenger in the truck, went through the windshield. The driver of the truck was taken to a nearby hospital with minor injuries. Police say that driver under the influence right now facing intoxication assault charges. That could be increased to intoxication manslaughter if the woman dies. And District 2 of San Antonio is one of the most culturally diverse areas of the city. Now, the district includes San Antonio's east side, which sometimes has the stigma of crime and violence. But the newly elected councilwoman of District 2 hopes to flip the narrative. In this week's leading essay, I sit down with Jada Andrews Sullivan. She tells me she plans to bring new economic development, beautification, and a sense of realism to the district she was raised in and the district she now represents. My one specific goal is to bring unity to our community. And that starts by me getting out to all of the ones that said, you're not supposed to be here, and help them understand 
that we are here not only for a specific few, but we're here for everyone. Councilwoman Jada Andrew Sullivan grew up on the east side. She tells me it's a problem when neighbors there look around, they see continued development in other parts of the city, but not theirs. We get a lot of the bad stigma, we get a lot of the bad press, but truly we have the richest culture. We have the greatest people. We have gifts that have not been tapped into. Andrew Sullivan has big plans for her hometown. She knows she has a lot of work to do and less than a year in, she's not wasting any time. But not just in the method of how we speak about it, but definitely how we put our boots on the ground, get to work, um, put our hands on the ground, pick up the trash in our community, which brings about a sense of understanding that we're not just here to be in the seat, we're here to truly do the work. One of the main priorities, bring business and bring money to the area. But once we start looking at those economic development aspects and not just the big corporations that can bring in the multi-millions, but truly look at how do we change a life one life at a time that's when we start making an impact on economic development. Andrew Sullivan says the east side has way too much to offer for companies not to move there. We need more tech savvy companies coming in. We have the microbiology coming in and so that is amazing. Let's get our kids into health conscious understanding of what it means to go into this health field. And as a local leader she aims to make district to a safer place and Andrew Sullivan a veteran knows you can't just police the problems away. And so we reach out to our faith base. We reach out to our civic leaders. We reach out to our economic leaders. We reach out to our school districts. It takes all of us. We need to get back to the rhetoric of it really does take a village. Gun violence is a big problem on the east side. There was an idea of a gun buyback program, but the program has evolved. It's now intended to be much more expansive. We're looking more to change the rhetoric of no longer just gun buyback, but how can each one step up and do their part to say, if you see it, say something. If you know something is going on, do something. But then I have this in my possession, let me lock it up. There are also issues of infrastructure, education, and transportation that the city councilwoman has plans to address. And she already knows this won't happen overnight. These solutions to the issues are not going to be simple. It's more of a holistic approach for District 2. It's not just a one-off, fits all Now, that was just a small fraction of the large range of topics that the councilwoman and I discussed. And right now on our KSET streaming app and KSET.com, you will be able to watch the entire interview, including links to previous stories we have done on topics that we touched on. And yeah, this is pretty cool. I was telling you earlier that I like the fact that she grew up mm -hmm. in District 2 and so, you know, obviously very familiar with, with all the issues. And I also liked how she was talking about she wants the community to also step up when it comes to safety. Right. And the way she said it when we were talking earlier, she said, um, you know, we can't just police the problems away. Right. You know, she really wants to go back to that narrative of it takes a village. Everyone needs to come together and improve. And there are a lot of plans in place. We talked about some programs that are going to be put into the East Side and District 2. Really hedge on that economic development and bringing more business. Because like she said, there's so much to offer there for more places and more companies not to go. And very exciting for District 2. But also, she mentioned it's not going to happen overnight. Good right. point. <laughs> and uh, this is just one of the series for leading essay. Next up, we have Roberto Trevino. District Can 1. District 1. I think it's your district. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I know. <laughs> and so you and yes. everyone watching, mm -hmm. if you have any questions, we love your submitted questions. And you can go to ksat.com right now and submit your question. I can ask them when we meet, I think, tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Yeah, I think my husband has some questions. Perfect. We'll let you know. Excited. <laughs> and just a reminder, our KSET Community Blood Drive kicks off tomorrow. That is January 27th. All right, we are teaming up with University Health System to help replenish the city's blood supply. Now, the blood drive going on until Friday, January 31st, but you don't have to wait until then. As National Blood Donor Month comes to an end, keep in mind University Health System is always accepting blood donations. Now, you can schedule an appointment at DonateBloodToday.com, and you can find all this information that's on our website at KSET.com. And I know you're one of the biggest proponents for donating blood. You do it all the time. I do. I, I need, I'm going to go back this week. I'm trying to decide a time because I, I actually want to take my daughter again. Mm. Uh, I took her. Uh, she was about three years old. I want her to not be afraid and also know, you know, that this is going to help somebody else. Right. So I'm kind of like trying to see when she's not in school and I'll take her out there. Smart. Starting them young. Yeah. <laughs> 809, 55 degrees out. And today is not Valentine's Day. No. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. So don't worry if you didn't buy the present. But it is definitely the perfect day to celebrate your spouse's ah, 
Hi. <laughs> There's Wiley, can you hear me? <laughs> That's coming up next. And are you ready for the biggest football game of the year? Still ahead on GMSA, a preview of what's to come next Sunday. So we're not talking about the Pro Bowl? Just kidding. Uh -huh. <laughs> Lego fans, listen up. You might want to head to Legoland this week. A discount you're not going to want to miss. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. A beautiful Sunday morning. Sarah Spivey is joining us in just a little bit. She tells us it is only going to get better. Does not feel like winter. We're going to tell you more after the break. And welcome back. It is 813, almost 814. Okay, 814 now. <laughs> Lego fans, listen to this. You might want to visit Legoland Discover Center next week. Starting tomorrow, San Antonio residents are getting 50% off admission to the ultimate indoor Lego playground located inside the shops at River Center Mall. Have you been? Not yet. It's really we cool. We need to go. Yeah. We went and they actually have a full diagram to scale of the entire city of San Antonio. I, I've seen video of that. I, I know it looks pretty cool. We need to get out there. It is really cool. So the reason is Legoland celebrating Locals Appreciation Week and they want to make sure all Lego fans take advantage of this discount. But all adults that enter the playground must have a child with them and show proof <laughs> of residency. So this offer is ending on Sunday, February 2nd. For more information, just visit our website at kset.com. So that means, Max, you can't go there without Rooney. I'm going to join your family <laughs> course, just for the day. Of course, of course. All right, well, if you ran out of ideas on how to celebrate Valentine's Day, it might be a unique one that you might want to consider. So this year you can have dinner among animals at the San Antonio Zoo. <laughs> How romantic, like, like Lady and the Tramp, you know, the two dogs aw, with the spaghetti. Okay. Sure. The zoo is hosting its <laughs> Wild at Heart event that includes a four course meal, a glass of wine, and of course a front row seat to the Africa Live exhibit. Mm. So there are two different ti times available, one at 5.30 p.m. and the other at 7.30 p.m. All this on Valentine's Day, which people falls on Friday this year. Woo! For Except more for details. people have to work early Saturday morning. Well, not too much woohoo. That's true. <laughs> we, we can we can tough it out. For more details, visit our website at kset.com. They had me with the four course meal. Yeah, we, it might be sold a little bit. Okay, well, interesting. Maybe, there's a 531. I know. I see it. Just eat fast. There you go. <laughs> All right, Ed, talking about love. Guess what national day it is today? Dun, dun, dun. It is National Spouses Day. Yeah, so we can celebrate. Yay! <laughs> so if you need an excuse for date night, there you have it. Marriage isn't always easy though, and sometimes the bond between spouses gets lost in the hustle and bustle of day-to-day -day life. So make sure to take the time today to appreciate the person who's there through the good times and the bad times. Not about the gifts, but it is about spending time together. That's cool. Let's uh, let's turn You're, it to our newlywed. I know, that's always oh, yeah. looking off I mean, screen. we're still in our newlywed. Yes, but you <laughs> already get to still. celebrate your spouse. That's, yeah. That's awesome. It's true. National Spouses Day. Mm. Oh, so oh, we got some fun facts. <laughs> Here, Shout I'll, out to I'll our new okay. producer, we'll Gabby, again. bringing all the goods today. Ten <laughs> reasons Americans appreciate their spouse. We're not going to go through all ten, <laughs> but any ones that jump out to you? Um, I like um, my spouse is a hard worker. Mm. That's 60% yeah. of people. I agree with that. 56% uh, says I can be myself around That's my important. Ooh, yes. important. I'm Great surprised parent. it's only 56%. <laughs> it's a little worrisome. Yeah. That means 44 didn't agree with that. And it's funny, um, I, I like this one. I know it's all the way to number nine, but mm. my spouse does the dishes. 29%. <laughs> Thank you, Luis. Yes. I'm sticking with number six, 45%. My spouse is a great parent. Oh, that's nice. good too. Mm. Yeah, there's also some negative ones. Top too. annoying thing? Yes. Ooh. My spouse has selective listening. That is also my husband, Luis, <laughs> who has tuned me out over the years. He can't hear me talking right now. <laughs> good morning. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. Well, happy it happens. National Spouses yes. Day. National yes. Spouses Day. Everybody. And All a right. great day to appreciate it outside. Yes, you that's know, true. it's going to be beautiful this afternoon. It'll be nice and warm and sunny. Uh, and we will be able to see a high temperature close to 80 degrees this afternoon. So It's winter, and right? It's January. Yeah. <laughs> in January, it That's is, cool. but it is going to be a little bit on the warmer side. We did start off with areas of fog and drizzle, but things have uh, really uh, started to improve out there, and now it is sunny. Now, as far as the fog and drizzle go, that, that means that mold is typically up a little bit, and we just got the pollen count in today. Mold is high, so if you're wheezing and sneezing, 
that mold is the reason. Mountain cedar is moderate. It could be a lot worse. We're still in the middle of mountain cedar season, uh, but it, it is moderate at 390 and ash is present, but in low amounts. Let's take a look at the live cam right now. Beautiful sunshine. Now earlier this morning we had widespread dense fog in some places and taking a look at visibility right now. There's still a couple of spots where there are some areas of fog. Bernie Stage Airfield right on the Kendall Bear County line experiencing uh, fire mile visibility. Look down at Stinson. A little bit of dense fog down at Stinson at the moment. And so there are still pockets of fog out there. So because of that, there's a dense fog advisory in place until nine just for the next 40 minutes or so. Most of us, however, complete sunshine. It's 46 at Bernie Sage Airfield, 54 at Bulverde, 55 at SA International, uh, and 56 in New Braunfels, generally waking up in the 50s around San Antonio, and that's quite a bit up from yesterday. Yesterday we were waking up in the 40s. Take a look at the satellite imagery as we zoom in. Those skies are just clearing from north to south, and soon here we're going to have a completely sunny day for everybody around the KSAT 12 viewing area, and as we head into the afternoon, that sun is going to really be able to warm us up. We'll have drier air in place, and so I'd expect an afternoon high right around 78 around downtown San Antonio. Elsewhere, the high temperatures will be in the mid to upper 70s, so it's going to be a warm day. We usually see a high temperature right around 63, 64 this time of year, so we will be well above that by 10 to 15 degrees. Clearing skies at the moment, warming up already at 70 by noon, 78 for the high, and then we'll cool down pretty quickly tonight too. Temperatures will fall into the 50s this evening under clear skies uh, and uh, calm wind conditions. And so tomorrow morning we should have some areas of patchy fog. Uh, but other than that, it'll be nice and sunny on Monday as well. All the rain that we desperately need is well to the east of San Antonio near New Orleans and the Mississippi River Valley. But our next system is going to be bringing us a chance for rain on Tuesday morning. Right now it's over the Pacific Northwest cold front and a low pressure system. And as we go forward in time, what you'll notice is that that rain chance is going to be best on Tuesday morning. Uh, we'll have a, areas of scattered rain overnight Monday into Tuesday, but for Monday itself, it should be nice and sunny. Then that front arrives on Tuesday morning, right around the morning commute. We'll have areas of scattered light rain. It'll push on through and it'll be nice and sunny on Wednesday as well. Unfortunately, we have a we have to say goodbye to the sunshine temporarily, but we desperately need the rain. So on Thursday, there's going to be another chance for rain. And notice that temperatures go from the upper 70s today to struggling to get out of the 50s on Thursday. So we'll have a gradual cool down with high temperatures, more seasonably average by the end of the week and by the end of January. That's okay. I don't mind. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't I mind. Like almost cool silver again. lining. Always a silver well, lining. And you got to remember, in August the average high temperature is 96. Yes. So, so we will enjoy the mild temps. Yes, we will. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 821, 55 degrees out. Next, we are going to be talking about the big game, the Pro Bowl today, but the bigger game, the Super Bowl next Sunday. That's right. And there are three cases of the coronavirus already confirmed here in the United States. When an American company is doing to help prevent it from spreading. Good morning and welcome back. 824 this Sunday morning and it is Pro Bowl Sunday. Six Cowboys set to take part in the fun All-Star game, but let's be honest. As big of an honor as it is, all of these guys would rather be playing next Sunday, Super Bowl 54. We are now just one week, nine hours, and about nine minutes to Super Bowl kickoff down in Miami. In case you didn't know, it is San Francisco 49ers led by a stringent defense, top-tier run game, Jimmy Garoppolo at the helm at quarterback, taking on the Kansas City Chiefs, that prolific offense, and of course, reigning MVP Patrick Mahomes. Right now, the Chiefs, a two-point favorite in the big game. Teams have been prepping at their respective practice facilities, but today they load up the plans and they head to the spot of the game, Miami. Time to talk the Spurs, silver and black, sitting at 20 and 24, the ninth seed in the West, half game behind the Grizz for that playoff spot, but they have a chance to get that eight seed today. Spurs hosting the Toronto Raptors this afternoon here at home, AT&T Center, 3 p.m. So how are we feeling, Steph? Go Spurs, go. I think Always. we're good, yeah. Feel, feeling confident? Yeah, Sunday, three o'clock in the afternoon. That's mm -hmm. a great, here at home. great time to win. All right, love it. Yeah. 826, 55 degrees out. And a World War II veteran asking for a simple wish for Valentine's Day. His story ahead on GMSA.
And we have some birthdays today. We have Monica and Nancy, who are sisters. Monica, 46, and 64. Uh, Nancy turning 64 years old today. Happy birthday, guys. Now remember, keep posting your birthday pictures to kset.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's a little warmer this morning than it was yesterday. So not too bad, but um, Sarah's saying it's going to hit close to 80. That's pretty. I, I was say, love I was San Antonio say, winters. I was going to say it's pretty much like San Antonio, though. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll be just shy of 80 degrees this afternoon. I think high temperatures will be in the upper 70s for the majority of us. By about 4 p.m. That's usually when we see a high temperature this time of year. But overnight, we had quite a bit of uh, drizzle and fog. In fact, at the airport, about four hundredths of an inch of precipitation was recorded. And, you know, mist, fog, drizzle, that is a great atmosphere for mold to grow. And so in today's pollen count, mold is high, unfortunately, at 9,360 mold spores per cubic meter of air. Mountain cedar, which has been causing a lot of problems as we're nearing the end of mountain cedar season, you can see that it's starting to drop. It's still moderate, though, so that could still cause some issues. Ash is present, but really minuscule, only low. Now, uh, in the uh, forecast, we're going to be seeing those temperatures rise pretty quickly here. We've been able to see skies clear. It's been a beautiful morning, but we do have a chance for rain right around the corner as well that I want to talk about. So busy forecast. I'll be back to tell you about the forecast uh, and what you can expect as we head into an interesting weather week. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Now to a top story we've been following this morning. San Antonio police trying to sort out what happened outside a tire shop where a woman was found dead next to a vehicle that had appeared to have crashed into a pole. Our Jesse Degollado is live at Public Safety Headquarters. Now, Jesse, was the woman the driver of that vehicle? Well, actually, the driver was a male who police say they found passed out on the front seat. But they also say they believe that both the men and woman had been highly intoxicated. The vehicle that they were in, as you say, had hit a pole in front of a tire shop. And witnesses told police that they didn't see the crash, but they certainly saw the woman next to the vehicle. Police say she'd suffered some road rash and it appeared she'd been dragged out of the vehicle. Now we're awaiting more information about what may have happened outside the tire shop, along with the identities of the man and woman. We're live outside Public Safety Headquarters, Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jesse. In your morning headlines, the number of deaths is now up to 35 after an earthquake hit eastern Turkey on Friday. At least 10 buildings collapsed, according to the Turkish interior minister, and it is believed that people may still be trapped. Turkish rescue teams have been working against the clock and under freezing temperatures to pull more survivors from collapsed buildings. Turkish officials say more than 1,000 people were injured and more than 600 aftershocks have rocked the region. And there are now three cases of the coronavirus confirmed here in the United States. Now, a company in Massachusetts is working to develop a vaccine to prevent the virus. Biotech company Moderna and the National Institute of Health are using mRNA technology, which instructs cells in the body to make proteins to prevent or fight disease. The first step is to figure out the right vaccine, then later prove it can work in humans during a clinical trial. Now over 50 people in China have died from coronavirus. And some good news for Boeing. The newest plane, the 777X, took its inaugural flight. Now this comes after windy weather had postponed the maiden flight since Thursday. The new 777X has composite fiber wings replacing the traditional aluminum ones. The wings are the largest Boeing has ever built at 114 feet long and 23 feet wide. The 777X also has a new engine, all new systems, as well as an all new design for the interior. The company says it has already received 320 orders for the brand new plane. And we have a look at some of the top stories making headlines this week. After taking a day break today, the Senate impeachment trial of President Donald Trump continues tomorrow, Monday. After starting on Saturday, the president's defense team now has two days left to finish the remainder of their time to present their opening statements. After having up to 16 hours for senators to submit written questions, a vote on whether to subpoena new witnesses and documents will likely follow.
And President Donald Trump has two Keep America Great events planned this week. On Tuesday, he will be in Wildwood, New Jersey, making the first time the president will hold a rally in the Garden State since being elected. Then on Thursday, he will attend a rally in Iowa just four days before the Democratic Iowa caucuses. And more than three and a half years after the British public voted to leave the European Union, Prime Minister Boris Johnson signing the withdrawal agreement, paving the way for Brexit on Friday. The January 31st deadline was set after several years of talks, two prime minister changes and three deadline extensions. And the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences will be hosting this year's nominees at the annual Oscar luncheon. And after being held at the Beverly Hilton for nearly four decades, this year the event will have a change of venue. On Monday, the nominees will meet, mingle and pose for this year's class photo in the Ray Dolby Ballroom. The Oscars will air right here on KSET 12 on Sunday, February 9th. For some people, it's that's their Super Bowl. There you go. That makes <laughs> sense. Yeah. 836, 55 degrees now. And a Valentine's Day to remember for a World War II veteran. Find out how the world helped to make a hero's wish come true. And if you're looking to start a family, how long can you afford to stay off the job? Coming up, more on a renewed push for federal policies that would pay workers during their time off. Well, if you are looking for a little bit older dog who is, boy, full of energy and life and vim and vigor and everything else, you're going to meet this girl coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. So Max said this dog was too big for that person's lap. Too I, big for I, any lap. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. Anyway, taking a look outside with live cam, beautiful shot out there. The sun is out. Yay. We're going to check in with Sarah to see what we can expect for the rest of your day. We'll be right back. Wendy's here from the Animal Defense League, and if you're looking for a dog that's going to give you a run for your money as far as <laughs> energy and just love and life, this one. And she's a love, too. I mean, she's very affectionate. This is Miss Isabel. She's eight years old, if you can believe it, and obviously in great health. Um, she is potty trained. She loves to ride in the car. And, you know, uh, Mike, we have our special Senior for Seniors program where uh, any dog or cat over the age of seven um, can be adopted by someone over the age of 60 with all of our fees waived. So, um, you know, Isabel is definitely a candidate for that and would be a great loving companion in your home. Hi, how are you? Oh, and just small enough to, to sit on your lap. Just about. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, and great, like you said, great markings. And if you are 60, you know that that uh, circle around the eye reminds you of Petey from the Little Rascals. Absolutely. Rascal, the okay, I think we just ran out of time. So <laughs> you can get her at the Animal Defense League, 11300 Nakadoshi. you got to get down to run She gives kisses, too. Oh. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. You're in Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo, or give him a call at 655-1481. Isabel, you ready to get down? Squirrel. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, dear. She's comfortable right there. Adorable. Yeah. But here's the thing, not a lap dog. <laughs> yes, clearly. <laughs> I guess technically yeah. you can make any dog a lap dog though. Yes, she's fine. Very cute. Yes, we're good. So a recent survey showed 70% of women who left the workforce did so because they needed flexibility, like time to care for a new baby, adopt a child, or a sick family member. Congress has attempted in the past to pass federal paid leave, and President Donald Trump announcing he will soon sign into law 12 weeks of paid leave for federal employees. But as our Erica Hernandez reports, the issue still remains for everyone else. Ashley McLeay is packing up and moving out. She and her husband need more room for their expanding family. When little Michael arrives, Ashley will take two weeks of vacation offered by her employer, followed by six weeks of unpaid leave under the Family Leave and Medical Act. In fact, one in four women go back to work within two weeks because they cannot afford to lose the pay or their job. Ashley admits it could get tight in those weeks without their paycheck. I'm currently paying student loans and we have a mortgage. Inez Stepman is with the Independent Women's Forum. They surveyed 2,000 Americans and found 73% wanted the government to take action on a federal paid leave plan, but one that doesn't hit taxpayers hard in the wallet. Americans are, are concerned that this kind of program be fair to everyone. A proposed earned leave policy would allow workers to tap into their social security benefits early while they are on leave and then extend the age at which they would be eligible for their benefits at retirement. 
The proposal uses the Social Security disability formulas already in place and is dependent on a person's current income. For somebody who's making about $30,000, this is somewhere between $900 and $1,000 a month. Parents could receive up to $1,800 a month and the program would be capped at $5,000. That helps to pay the mortgage, it helps to pay the grocery bills, it helps to keep the electric on. Stedman says the Earn Leave proposal, his broad bipartisan support and politicians have shown willingness to address the issue. The U.S. is the only industrialized country that does not federally mandate paid parental leave. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. All right, so yesterday you had the Weather yes. 101 question. Yeah. It's a quiz I frequently get wrong here on GMSA. Uh -huh. And the question was the average temperature <laughs> for high the temperature. month of January. Yeah, right, it was B. Average high. It was B. It was 63 degrees, <laughs> and you got it right. Yes. You we're were already at 55. I guess 58. Right, I 58. So you were close for, for today. Well, for right now. But this is for not right going to be the high for yeah. today. No, true, it is true. not going to be the high for today. In fact, we're going to be in the mid to upper 70s this afternoon, <sighs> ah. which, you know, is comfortable. Yeah. I love it. That's open the windows mm -hmm. and turn off Go the air for conditioning. for a walk. Yeah. yeah and um, it's going to be beautiful. I mean, even just looking at the live shot outside right now, absolutely gorgeous with the sunshine. Yeah, that is uh, nice. Yeah, and this is a nice improvement because even when I was coming to work this morning, at about three o'clock in the morning. Uh, there was areas of drizzle and mist out there. And so big improvement just in the last couple of hours. We've got slightly drier air moving in. The skies have been able to clear and temperatures are a little on the cool side right now. It's 55 degrees, but that's not as cold as it was yesterday when we started off in the mid 40s. Uh, tons of sunshine out there. Visibility is at a perfect 10. Earlier this morning, that fog was around it. We still have a couple of areas where patchy fog is around. But taking a look at the radar and satellite, you can see those skies clearing around San Antonio. Honestly, really in the state of Texas, the only rain to speak of is east of Galveston. There were some thunderstorms in the Galveston, Houston area. But here in San Antonio, we're seeing those skies really start to clear. Uh, and again, a beautiful day. Visibility has totally improved for everybody. Uh, and although there could be a couple of areas of patchy fog out there still, we're looking at complete sunshine. And we're warming up too. 60 in Gonzales, 61 in Carrizo Springs, 61 in Catula, it's 54 in Del Rio and 52 in Rock Springs. In the high res future cast, nothing but sunshine. If we're going to see tons of blue skies out there and that's gonna allow temperatures to warm up. By 10, we'll be in the low to mid 60s. By noon, we'll be at 70 degrees with clearing skies. And then in the afternoon, total sunshine, 78 for the high around San Antonio. And then we cool down pretty quickly too, about a 20 degree drop over five hours from four to nine. So it's gonna be a cooler evening. Uh, but that high temperature of 78 today is definitely gonna be the warmest day in the next seven day period. Notice how our high temperatures really start to go down. We get a cold front on Tuesday morning, and then that cooler air is just gonna work its way in. Part of the reason why we're only going to be in the 50s on Thursday is because we'll have a shot at some scattered rain. But what about Tuesday when that front moves through? There is the potential for some rain then. That front right now is over the Pacific Northwest and it's going to spill the some cooler air, Pacific cooler air uh, across uh, the United States in the week ahead. But for now, both today and tomorrow, we'll have a good amount of sunshine in the forecast. Tuesday morning, that front will arrive. It'll allow for a broken line of showers. So we're really only going about 40% for rain chances. It's not going to amount to too much, but the possibility is there and it could make for a slightly messy morning commute on Tuesday. Then on Tuesday, we'll clear out in the afternoon, and on Wednesday, we'll have tons of sunshine as well. Notice that those temperatures are gonna go down. We'll have an areas of rain on both Thursday and Friday with more cloud cover in store, but at least we clear out for the weekend, Super Bowl weekend, and also a lot of us are gonna be out at the KSAT Corral mm -hmm. on Saturday. Should I heard there's a rumor nice? we may or may not have baby goats. Yes, but not doing yoga. We're gonna <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that stipulation, Stephanie. <laughs> I just don't want to, you know, get people. For those up. who don't know, there's a craze of baby goats and yoga yeah. going around. We're not falling into the craze, no. though, but we do love baby goats, and yes, they will be course. at the KSAT Corral. Yeah, just not doing yoga. Yeah. And if you want to sign up, you can do so right now, KSAT.com. Yeah, just check out our website. We'll all be there. Thank you, Sarah.
We'll see you there. 848, 55 degrees now. And he's got a purple heart. Now he just wants Valentine's hearts. What a World War II veteran is asking for on Valentine's Day. That's next. And before we take a break, let's take a look at Aww. those birthdays this morning. Chloe, five years old. Happy birthday, Chloe. Happy birthday, Chloe. Everyone should be that happy. Cute. Another cute picture. Happy birthday, Fernando. Fernando also turning five. Happy birthday. Now keep posting your birthday pictures to kset.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. A woman is found dead laying next to a vehicle that had crashed into a pole. The driver was passed out on the front seat. The vehicle and the woman were discovered outside a tire shop on Culebra. They say the woman had suffered some road rash. They also say it appeared as if she'd been dragged out of the vehicle. The names of those involved have yet to be released. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. In the news you need to know before you go, a man dead this morning after being shot in the leg in his own home by four suspects attempting to rob him. Now, all of this happened just before midnight in the 100 block of Hidalgo Street. That's on the west side. According to police, four suspects broke into the home, asked that man inside for money. When the man said he didn't have any money, one of the suspects shot the victim in the leg. They left the scene, taking nothing with them. That man was taken to the hospital where he later died. Police say the bullet actually struck a main artery in his leg. Three other people were inside the home at the time of the invasion, the time of the shooting. Right now, they're being questioned by police. And a woman is in critical condition after police say a truck crashed into a pole just south of downtown. Now, it happened just after midnight at the intersection of Gunther Street and Eagle Land Drive. Now, police say the crash was so intense, the woman who was a passenger in that truck went through the windshield. The driver of the truck was taken to a nearby hospital with minor injuries. Now, police say the driver of the pickup was under the influence and is now facing intoxication assault charges, which could be increased to intoxication manslaughter if that woman dies. And tomorrow on GMSA, exercising, very important for our health, but sometimes it can cause injuries. Find out what the most com common mistakes are when we go to the gym and how to easily avoid them. Well, some people may be getting a lot of exercise by sneezing. You know? <laughs> oh, no. good, good ab workout. Mold is high, unfortunately, past 9,000. Mountain Cedar is moderate at 390. Today's going to be a warm one. We're starting off the 50s, but we'll warm up into the mid to upper 70s this afternoon. And then on Tuesday morning, we have a shot at some rain. Sunshine on Wednesday, more rain possible on Thursday as well. And we will take any little bit of rain that we can get because we are in the middle of severe drought across parts of Southern Bear County and southeast of San Antonio. So here's fingers crossed for that rain on Tuesday morning and on Thursday. Until then, it's actually going to cool down quite a bit. Our highs will only be in the 60s by the end of the week. All right. Well, fingers crossed for the rain and we'll wait to wash our cars. Sounds good. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, a World War II veteran has a purple heart and now he wants other people to reach out their hearts. Well, for Valentine's Day, 104-year-old Major Bill White just asked for a few Valentine's Day cards, but the response was never what he expected. So Operation Valentine turned out to be a huge success for Major White. With still three weeks left to go until Valentine's Day, Major White has already received over 25,000 cards and gifts from people around the world thanking him for his service. Makes me feel good inside because he did what he did. He fought for the war for us, so I wanted to make him happy by drawing a Valentine's Day card. Some letters were actually made from students here in the U.S., but are even coming from as far away as Brazil and Japan, which is pretty amazing. Wow. That's cool. I'm glad that all these students and people stepped up to his request. A nice it's looking picture there too. Amazing. No, it was really cool. And you know what? We first actually talked about this story a few weeks ago Aww. when he had come out and done like a video or a post on social media and said, you know, all he wanted was some letters and notes for people from Valentine's Day. We had posted about it, and you know, people who have responded to us on social media, they have actually just said, oh, that is so adorable. We're going to do what we can. Where's the address? Sent them the link, and hopefully. Yeah. That actually helped out. From so, San Antonio, so thank you very much. Yeah. That is awesome. Love living in Military City, USA. Yeah. 